today we're gonna take a look at the mystic spear hand or dragon's dogma version of a sith lord and man does it fit that role perfectly it's extremely flashy very acrobatic deals tons of damage if played properly and can even protect its entire party via some of the best shields in the game today we're gonna go over some of its best abilities how to best play it and of course some of the worst too because this is all what the series is about going over the positives as well as the negatives so let's jump right in now to unlock the class you simply have to talk to Sigurd at any point in the game but the earliest you can find him is right after the monster calling mission once you complete it for Brandt back in Vernworth. From that point on simply head over back to Melv which is going to be under attack by a dragon covered in postules so no matter what happens if you defeat it or if it runs away you can then talk to Sigurd right after that mission and he's going to unlock that class for you right away. However, if that fight doesn't spawn for you, he's always going to spawn right here in his home back at Harv Village. So you can always find him here. This is even going to work for his master skill if you also miss that one up later on in the game. But yeah, this vocation is absolutely amazing. It's all about mobility and damage. And Dragoon's Foin, one of your first abilities, is one of the staple skills you should always have equipped. This is an amazing gap closer that also deals a nice stab damage that can interrupt most of the enemies of the regular size. This is what you're going to be using most of the time to get close to combat, jump in. But it can also be used as a way to cover distance. For example, if you want to jump over obstacles or reach high up places, or just jump over ledges and canyons, this is an amazing ability to have nonetheless. And usually you will want to couple this with a later on called Sky Dragoon Fast or Fasty, not sure how you pronounce that, but this is this really insane jump and stab back into the ground. This you can actually couple with the previous kill and use it as a way to climb on enemies' backs or to at least stagger the ones on the ground if they are on a smaller size. It's one of the best abilities to also avoid damage and overall just makes the class the way it is, very flashy, very cool and very acrobatic. Another amazing skill is the third one which is the mirror shield and this I would say is by far the best ability in the entire game especially once you fully upgrade this as you can buff yourself with a shield that's completely impenetrable for at least three hits but this also applies to your entire party so it's an amazing way to mitigate so much damage especially in huge boss fights now it only lasts for like a few seconds plus after three hits it completely expires but the good news is that you can constantly and consistently reactivate this with only the stamina cost. There's no cooldown, you can activate this all the time and it's something that you should always have available whenever you jump in the middle of a boss fight. No joke, you can tank 2-3 bosses at the same time, stay in the middle of their attacks and you're not gonna get hit at least for 3 rounds. Another ability I would say is top tier is the Ravenor's Hound, which is this ability that lets you sap the stamina out of your target and make yours recover really fast. The reason this is so amazing is because you can actually use this in conjunction with, for example, your master skill that we unlock in just a bit to consistently take back stamina and not have almost any downtime. The moment your stamina is completely consumed, you can go ahead, activate this, get that all the way back and resume attacking with your strongest skills. That's why I will say that this is one of the most important abilities to have in the end game. You just need this, the jump and then the gap closer and one more ability and you're pretty much the best in slot in terms of the best abilities for the Mystic Spear Hand. Which brings us to the one skill that synergizes perfectly with the Thief's Hand and that's going to be the Wild Fury, your one and only master skill that again you learn from Sigurd. I really love this one, it actually deals tons of damage as it also spawns a clone that deals the same amount of damage so you're essentially doubling the damage of your attacks. And it has a very long attack pattern of like 6, 7 or 8 attacks so you're going to absolutely demolish enemies. And it synergizes perfectly with the Thief's Hand because as you're getting low to stamina you can just pop off the Thief's Hand, sap the stamina out of the enemy and then cast Wild Fury again on repeat. Against bosses, this is by far the best option if you want to be completely optimal and it's even going to help a ton to stagger it and keep it just in check so you're not gonna have too much trouble with the boss moving around too much. By the way, to get this, again, you will have to get it from Sigurd, except that you have to progress in the A New God's Way mission, which is pretty far into the game. 
And in this one, you're going to have to head over right here on this side of the map and defeat that postulant boss again for the second time. If for some reason he doesn't give it to you at that point, you can again head over back after a day or two at the Harf village to his home and he's going to give it to you right then and there. Now, technically, we have one more top tier ability. However, this is in the core skills category. So it's called the winding cut. And this is basically your fast attack. But to pull it off, you have to tap that square button or the equivalent on the keyboard very, very fast, much faster than in the case of the rogue. I would say like two times faster. But if you pull it right, it's going to trigger within one or two animations. And this is what you will want to use, especially if you get an enemy downed or if you jump on one of its weak points. You can actually angle this at their heads or wings or like tails, for example, and unleash a huge amount of burn damage. No joke, this will absolutely shred them to pieces like you're some kind of blender just making enemies go to bits and it's very satisfying to pull off as well because it's also going to interrupt their attacks and prolong some of their suffering simply because you're burning through that hp bar so very fast that you have to jump to the next phase especially in terms of the bosses now we do have some other situationally decent and i would say even very funny to play with skills one of them is onto sky or well i would say onto the sky because that's essentially where you send your enemies so this is something that you charge up momentarily as enemies get close to you. You pull them in a gravitational field and then simply fling them away on the other side of the planet. This is no joke, one of the funniest probably skills I've ever seen in this game. I don't think there's anything quite like it. Now, even though it is funny, it is useful because if you don't have the damage to deal with these enemies fast enough, you can just fling them very far away and the fall damage will take care of everything for you. That's why I suggest using Dragoon's Foin at the start so that you can momentarily, well, stagger these enemies or make them flinch a little bit so that you have just the split second that you need to cast this ability and have them in your range so that you can then throw them very far away. But otherwise, an extremely fun ability and something that you should play with a bit, at least for some time. Now, unfortunately, we do have some quite disappointing skills in there too, and I believe that, at least in my opinion, my biggest disappointment came from the Magic Spear Gone. I mean, these names are completely butchered, but this was the ability that I wanted to work the most but it seems to be the weakest in your arsenal so this charges a very well not really powerful beam that normally should be insanely good at aiming at the enemy's head however it seems that it just deals mediocre damage in that amount of time that you're staying there static and charging that attack consuming three quarters of your stamina you might as well just jump in and do maybe even more damage than the one that you just did so unfortunately, as much as I wanted to love this ability, it's just very weak and only situationally good. Like, you have to be extremely, extremely good and lucky to aim a target at its precise weak point. There were even targets in there that I would consistently hit in their weak points, like especially the golems, and this ability would not do any damage. No joke, I think that it needs to be at least fixed. Another one that was kind of okay, I guess, was the Seaching Storm. So this one is actually pretty decent early on because it causes these, uh, well, crystals to appear around you, which um, once conjured, they will just auto-track to the nearest target and sometimes even to multiple targets. It can be actually decent because you can cast it in the middle of attacks. It doesn't seem to have any cooldown. You can spam it on repeat and it can help to make them flinch, interrupt them a little bit, just as you're jumping in with your own attacks, or maybe even provide a bit of extra damage if you're fighting against bosses. Plus, it can help with the harpies, auto-tracking them, and like just interrupting them can help quite a bit. Now, this skill is actually very similar to a previous one called Humble Offering. I think uh, that's what it's trying to say over here. This does pretty much the same. You're kind of Jedi levitating things off the ground and enemies and then throwing them into other enemies. This is what's going to make you feel like a Jedi slash Sith the most in combination with the other skills. It's actually a solid B, maybe even B plus over there because it's very useful in situations where there's lots of enemies on the ground. You can lift them off and then just bully the other enemies with the corpses of their fallen friends. Or you can just send off rocks and boulders into their face and it seems to deal a decent amount of damage. It also works on harpies, by the way, but overall I think that it's a very decent ability to have, especially at the early stage you get it. 
Now, your special ability is going to be the Forbidding Bolt, and there are three upgrades right here in the core skills that will all help with just making it a lot stronger. So the way you want to use it with these three upgrades is to essentially hold down R1 and charge it up. This is how you're going to then be able to stun an enemy. And if you hit a stun target and then press R1 again, just as the target gets hit, you're then going to have that stun effect jumping to additional targets around it too. But you can also, for example, use the quick fault in this case and press X instead, just as that hits the target and instantly teleport or well jump directly to that target. In this case, you don't have to use the Dragoon Fist, you can use this one instead. But this is a little bit more clunky and you do have to be very precise with the timing of the button press, otherwise you're completely going to miss it. But even still, it's a very solid option, especially against enemies that tend to move a lot or if you just want a group of targets to stay still while you're going in and doing damage. And yes, it also works on bosses, so it's a very good option to have in between some of your other attacks. Now, finally, we have the augments. I would say that out of all of these, only maybe athleticism is completely like needed for most of the builds, but conveyance, this is just going to make your movement faster, especially when carrying or lifting stuff, which doesn't happen too often. We do have opulence, which can definitely be helpful as it increases the gold that you obtain when acquiring coin pockets, so it can definitely be good. Uh, we do have polarity, so this is actually good because it augments your strength during the day and magic during the night, so it's always something that I have available for most of the builds. And we do have refulgence. This increases the amount of rift crystals that you obtain when acquiring rift um, fragments and the like. And that's pretty much it. But athleticism is going to help you, like I said in yesterday's video, with uh, reducing the stamina consumption when sprinting. But it's going to help a ton with open world exploration. And that is pretty much it with the class. Let me know down below, are you playing as a Mystic Spearhand? I think it's one of the best classes, but I would love to know what's your opinion down below. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.